Hi everybody, welcome back to Borderlands 3. With the newest update that went live on August 8th, players became able to boost a character to level 72 and bypass the story for free. I figured now is as good a time as ever to show you how to quickly and efficiently gear up to take on Mayhem 11 as Flack the Beastmaster. Note that even though this is a Beastmaster guide, a lot of what I will go over will apply to all the Vault Hunters as well. Without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is set up your skill tree. Although Flax skills have a ton of reading and math involved, specking him is actually pretty simple. Simply work your way down the orange and green skill trees until you reach both capstones, picking up all the damage along the way. In this instance, I skipped the reload speed skill and the extra projectile skill. You're going to want to put some extra points into the blue tree until you unlock the great horned skag pet. It will give you a nice boost in damage when you need it. The other point I highly recommend is lick the wounds in the green skill tree. This will allow your pet to revive you and fight for your life. It's an amazing skill that gives Flax some of the best survivability in the game in my opinion. The last two things to note is that you're going to want to equip the Jabber as the pet as he gives you a movement speed bonus and to equip the Until You're Dead Fadeaway Augment that keeps the fadeaway movement speed active even after it fades away. These two movement speed boosts will help us greatly at getting around the maps faster, even without a snowdrift relic equipped. Next, it's time to gear up. Head to Sanctuary 3, turn on Mayhem 11, and sell off all the green starter gear that the game gives you. Not only does this give us a fresh start, but it also gives us the money required to get our first weapon, Miss Moxie's Crit. To get the crit, simply head to Moxie's Bar, Again, make sure you're on Mayhem 11 and tip her in $1,000 increments until you get a notification that she sent you mail. Hit the pause button, head to the social tab, and check your mail. You have a chance to either get a crit or a hail. I personally like to get several copies of the crit to hopefully land myself a decent anointment like this 150 over 90 here. Note that crit farming is not required, but it does give you a really nice weapon to start with. What we would really like to do next is farm Kilovolt for Flak's best in slot weapon, the Monarch Vladoff Assault Rifle. But we have a couple problems. First, although the crit is an amazing and easy way to get a Mayhem 10 scaled weapon, it only comes in shock, which Kilovolt was immune to. So we are going to have to farm a different weapon. Luckily, we have access to another easy farm that doesn't require killing any tanky enemies on Mayhem 11, and that's the Butcher Shotgun. To get the Butcher, turn on Mayhem 1 and head to Skywell 27 on Promethea. Then follow the path as I run it here until you get to the save point, which is at the start of the indoor bunker. Once you reach the save point, head back out the door the way you came. So that's the left if you're looking at the save station. And then head down the path, under the platform, and down toward Dinklebot. Dinklebot will be extremely easy to kill because we are using a Mayhem 10 crit SMG on Mayhem 1. When you kill him, he will drop a Ludogram which can be turned into Crazy Earl aboard Sanctuary in exchange for a 25% chance at the Butcher Shotgun. After killing Dinkobot and picking up the Ludograms, save quit the game and reload back in. When you load in, you will be at the save station you triggered earlier. Simply turn right and follow the path to the Dinkobot. Kill him and grab the Ludogram. I personally recommend completely filling your inventory with Ludograms before returning to Sanctuary, so that you don't have to run to Dinklebot all the way from the start of Skywell 27 every time. Head back to Sanctuary and turn on Mayhem 11 so that your drops will be as powerful as possible. If you're a bit unlucky like me, you will only get one Butcher in your first batch and it's Cryo, not the best for taking down Kilovolt. We want either Radiation or no element at all. Luckily, you can sell all the commons and Lucian's calls that drop and get yourself some more backpack space at the SDU. Then return to Skywell 27 and repeat the steps to obtain your Butcher. Note that here I take a peek at the shield vendor to see if I can find something useful and boom, I found an anointed shield that gives me movement speed after telling my pet to attack something. In my second batch, I got way more Butchers, including two that I felt could easily clear Kilovolt, but we're not quite ready to take him on yet. First, we need to get our boss shredding class mod, the Bounty Hunter, which is on the planet Necrodafeo in the Tanzandir ruins. The Bounty Hunter allows us to activate Hunter kill skills, from which Flak gets a lot of his power, by simply hitting enemies with bullets without needing to kill them, which is perfect for bossing. Lieutenant Preston is the guy we're looking for, and he is located here, about 80% of the way through the map. 
Note that you can turn on Mayhem 1 for this farm, as class mods do not have different stats or anything depending on Mayhem level. When you get to Preston, make sure that you take this lift up to the higher level and activate the save station just like we did on Skyroll 27. This greatly increases how quickly we are able to farm the boss. We will be able to shred Preston because we are using a Mayhem 10 Butcher against the Mayhem 1 enemy. Here, I got a bit lucky by getting a Bounty Hunter on the first drop and it rolled shotgun damage. How nice. If you don't get it, simply save, quit, reload, and drop down to kill him again. Now that we have our weapon and class mod of choice, it's time to farm our buddy Kilovolt for his precious monarch. Unfortunately, Kilovolt is actually the final boss of a side quest, which is not completed on these fresh level 72 boosted characters. But luckily, his home zone of Lectra City on Promethea is already unlocked for us. Head there and use the travel door to the Meridian Metroplex. From there, head straight, and you will see two quest yellow objective exclamation points. The further of the two is the Kill Kilovolt quest. The quest is pretty simple. It does require some combat and some parkour. You don't have to do it on Mayhem 11 like I did, but hey, you might as well use our new fun gear, right? Once you get access to the Kilovolt fight, you're going to need to kill him once and then return to Moxie before you can continue farming him. The Kilovolt fight can be pretty challenging. He constantly shocks the floor, and his shields can be tricky to bypass. Luckily, we have Fade Away to help us. Make sure you have the top and bottom green augments for your action skill, and the Great Horn Skag Pet equipped for damage. Pop Fade Away, and start blasting. Kilovolt can teleport away from the fight, which can be annoying, but be patient, especially on your first few kills. You'll get better at it as you go. He will spawn some pretty squishy mobs that you can take down easily enough. Once you get his shield down, he will walk around all angry and immune for a second and then become hittable again. Note, his crit spot is his groin and butt area, not his face. This is really important as Flak because the more crits we hit, the faster we get back fade away. So prioritizing hitting those crits as much as possible is extremely important. The Monarch only has a 16.5% chance of dropping, so don't get discouraged if you don't see one right away. There are a bunch of items to be looking out for in the loot piles after each of your fights. The first is a Snowdrift Relic, as this will allow you to move around each map a ton faster by sliding around. Second is the Stone Relic, which comes in multiple elements. You'll want to pick one up now as we will need it for Iridium farming later. The third is the Icebreaker Relic, which can also help us out later in our final build. And finally are items that can help you clear faster. This can be a shield with an action skill and bonus radiation anoint, which is fairly common, or a relic that has a bonus to shotgun damage to help out your butcher. You will also want to be on the lookout for a grenade with the on grenade throw anoint, because that will also help you clear faster. Once you get a monarch, you can check its stats to see how close it is to a god roll by checking the link I have provided in the description. The link will bring you to a Google Sheets that has all the game's weapons top damage rolls for every element. The Monarch comes in both a times 4 and times 8 variant. I prefer the times 4 as the times 8 burns the magazine far too quickly. Don't get discouraged if you get, don't get an amazing anointment on your Monarch right away, as you can always reroll it. You can decide to stop farming whenever you want. In this case, I stopped when I found my first non-elemental Monarch times 4 with a somewhat decent anointment that I can plan on rerolling later on. Now it's time to get our final piece of gear, our shield. You can go a ton of different directions here, but I like to use the Frozen Heart that drops from Aurelia the Baroness in the Black Barrel Cellar on Eden 6. There are plenty of save stations along the way, so you can simply snow drift your way through the zone if you've managed to get one from Killabolt. Aurelia is a really annoying fight with a bunch of immunity things going on. Luckily we have a Monarch and a Butcher at our disposal. I got a Frozen Heart on my first run, but with the wrong Anoint. Note that you can farm her on lower Mayhem's but you'll want an anointed copy of the shield. The higher your mayhem, the higher the chance of an anointed copy, with mayhem 8 and up guaranteeing an anoint. The anoint we want is the action skill start trigger any effects that occur on shield break or fill. This is an amazing augment for the shield as it will freeze nearby enemies whenever you activate fade away, making them easy targets to shred. There are two ways to get the anoint you want. First, you can keep farming Aurelia, yuck, or you can farm the required Iridium it takes to reroll the Anoint at Crazy Earls. Iridium farming is a big part of BL3 Endgame, so it's worth learning how to do it anyways. 
There are a few good methods, but the easiest and fastest is to head to the Voracious Canopy on Eden 6, then turn on either Mayhem 10 or 11. Go to the marker displayed on screen. From there, you'll need to head to this cave and drop down. Below the Salvage Claptrap are 9 total Iridium piles. Some are visible, some are not. Equip your Stone Relic, as it adds an element to your melee strikes that will increase the amount of Iridium you get per pile. Smash the piles. There are 4 on the first ledge and 5 down below. Note that you can smash even the invisible piles. After collecting your Iridium, you can either save quit and repeat, or if you're on console, you can save time by swapping between Mayhem 10 and 11. Both give equal Iridium. After farming up some Iridium, you can head back to Sanctuary 3 and reroll your Frozen Heart at Crazy Earl's Reroller for 250 Iridium per pop. This price is steep, but the rewards are worth it. If you have any extra Iridium left over, you can always start working on fixing your Weapon Anoint as well. This won't be needed for mobbing, but for bossing, you'll want a decent Weapon Anoint. And there you have it, a really quick and efficient way to gear up for Mayhem 11 on Flak. You now have a crit, a butcher, a monarch, which is more than enough to take on the game's hardest challenges. You also have a bounty hunter class mod, a grenade to boost your damage, and different relic options based on the situation. The gameplay is pretty simple. Get close to an enemy, pop fade away, which will trigger your frozen heart, and then melt down your frozen foes. Note that the icebreaker relic we were on the lookout for earlier will boost our damage even more against frozen foes. Even if you don't play Flak, I hope you learned a thing or two about how to get your character for the endgame. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to see more videos like this one, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!